What I'm making from Facebook, YouTube, where you guys are watching from, this is Griffin 2 Gamer, and I am back here again, making you guys another video, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So, guess what, guys? Today, we are going to be taking a look at the live stream that Call of Duty um, has been doing right now, um, Infinite Warfare. And, and they're going to be talking about the zombies, the mode, how everything is going, like the weapons, the pack a punch, the Easter eggs, the characters, the gameplay. Everything that's happening right here. So they're gonna be talking about it right now And I just can't wait to show you guys the video. So it's gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome And I just can't wait to see uh, What kind of stuff we're gonna be um, Kind of stuff we're gonna be uh, Hmm Gonna be seeing and playing. That's about it. So anyways guys, um, just put you guys out. I I've already seen the live stream so it's kind of awesome, but I recorded it for you guys, so hope you guys enjoy the video. And for the people who haven't seen it, hope you guys uh, watch it and enjoy it. And let's see if you guys are into playing Infinite Warfare Zombies, so awesome. And uh, just to let everybody know, I'm going to be doing some stuff for Infinite Warfare. Because uh, you know that there's some people that, some people were talking about uh, Call of Duty and all that stuff. So, you know what? I've never done anything uh, related to Call of Duty, like gameplays and all that stuff. I did have gameplays in, in my background, in my videos, but I don't have... I never actually talked about it. Like, what kind of weapon is good in the game, or what kind of strategies I can give you, all that stuff. So, eh, you know. Why don't I not give it a shot? It'll be great. <clears throat> so anyways guys, uh, I'm going to be showing you guys the video of the uh, producers. Uh, the makers of Infinite Warfare Zombies, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Okay, so, anyways, guys, uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you guys enjoyed the video. And when the live and when the video of the live stream was done, then the video is done. <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace out, guys. Stay two gamers. <laughs> That trailer was fantastic, man. Hey, I'm Jay Farrow, a.k.a. Andre the Rapper, a.k.a. Ice Pick. I'm actually in Zombies in Spaceland. I'm a character. You can play with me. It's dope. I'm here, sitting here with my homeboy, Brian Bright, the project director for Zombies in Spaceland. Also, Lee Ross, the associate project director for Zombies in Spaceland. And welcome to the color value scale. What you got here? You got vanilla, we got caramel, and we got dark chocolate. And as you can see, right here, this is what we have right here, folks. This is what we're doing right here. You know what I mean? This right here, this right here is one of the scenes out of the game. Matter of fact, when we first see us, all four of the characters, and you see the, the Vincent Gould guy. What's his name, sir? Willard Wilder. Willard Wilder. When you see Willard Wilder, this is actually the setting that we are in. So what they have done is they have transformed this room, which used to be a storage room, into a movie theater. Ain't this beautiful? It's nice. So, we're here to talk about Zombies in Spaceland co-op mode of Infinite Warfare is what we're going to be talking about here, folks. Because it was just so much. So much. There's so much in the game that we couldn't put in the trailer. So we're going to give you an inside edition. You feel me? We're going to give you an inside look. That's what we're going to do. Uh-huh. So, uh, tell me more about this world. So, where did you all come up with this idea? We want players to experience something brand new when they get into Zombies, and we've created something that takes them nowhere that Zombies has ever gone before. We're traversing players all the way back to the 1980s, which is just awesome in itself. And we wanted to go to a place that was really fun. And I mean, what's, what's more fun than a theme park, right? So within this space, we have park attractions that have been transformed into weaponry for the players. Right. And of course, our zombies are decked out just to look like 80s people, right? So the crazy hair, the awesome clothes. And then there's a, a DJ in the park that's like, He's mixing it up and playing all those awesome tunes for the players. So for us, it was really, we just wanted to have a good time with this experience. Mm, mm, mm. That's cool. What about you, sir? Well, uh, growing up in the 80s. Um, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. And DJing definitely. in the 80s, you know, I, I have a high affinity for the music, um, but as well as just some of the, you know, the iconography, the graphics, the, the, the hot neons, the pinks, the big, you know, in your face, kind of like Max Headroom looking stuff. It always seemed like it was too much makeup on some of the people in the 80s. You know, well, what I'm a saying? lot of dudes wear makeup too, right? Yeah. The hair metal yeah, stuff. Yeah, new With fishnets well, and yeah. long hair and... They put them on the arm and stuff and fishnets I'm on not the judging, arm. but you know, it was... You know.
You don't want to do that it wasn't with my thing. You don't want to do that with somebody that's like too big, the arm too big, because then it'd be the, the little, they'd be popping out yeah. and be looking like bubble wrap. Mm. You don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? You gotta sit there. <laughs> you gotta sit there and go like this and pop them all. <laughs> you know. Let's talk about the archetypes of the game. Let's do that. Well, the story is we have four aspiring actors who right. show up for an audition uh, for a really eccentric but very well-known director in Hollywood. He's been around for 40 plus years, making some really terrifying horrible, visceral scenes in movies. Uh, he's done things like Murder High and Captain Kill, and of course, the famous Zombies in Spaceland. Okay. So when these actors show up, they think it's there for an audition, but it turns out he wants to get a little bit more out of them. So as they sit down in this old movie theater to audition, he says, you know what, let me roll one of my old films for you and kind of get you into character. But he meant quite literally. Suddenly, a vortex opens in the screen, and they're ripped right from their seats into the silver screen. Before they know it, they're in the 1980s. Their clothing has changed, their hair has changed, and they've taken on the persona of the archetypes that our players are gonna get to play as. So our valley girl, our nerd, our rapper, and our jock, obviously mm -hmm. yourself is playing the rapper, and that's, yes, kind of, yes, yes, yes. that's kind of like a birth of like Run DMC meets NWA. So we kind of have that, that cool suaveness with the fat mm -hmm. gold chain, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. that street grit that NWA brings to the table. Yeah, hell yeah, and then of yeah. course, what would the 80s be without a valley girl, right? So we have the lovely Sashir Zamata playing the valley girl. Uh, on top of that, we have Seth Green, who's playing the nerd. Super iconic, right? I mean, yeah, can't hardly wait. Yeah. And then we have Ike Barinholtz playing the jock. And this is an experience where you bring four really different characters together and then say, all right, try to survive. You know what's, and you know what's funny that you say that because when you actually do have characters, whether it be a game, whether it be a movie, if you don't feel connected to that character, then it, then the movie sucks. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, but the the level of personality to characters, whether it be whatever, like that's what keeps you enwrapped in it, and that's what makes something amazing. All right, so, all right, so let's talk about <coughs> let's talk about the big. Let's talk about the big guest that you all have in the game. The big guest, the big bambino, the guy who a lot of people probably will recognize. You can't not recognize this guy, but you know who I'm talking about. He's an 80s icon. He's an 80s icon. He's the man. He's the myth. He's the legend. It's David Hasselhoff. David Hasselhoff. How the hell did I get in the game? the hell did I get in the game with David Hasselhoff? You know what? Thank you so much. My brother, thank you. Thank you for putting me in this game. I'm in the game with David Hasselhoff. That is just fantastic, man. That's fantastic. I'm in the game with David Hasselhoff, and he is what? He's the DJ, right? He is the park's DJ. So he's the man behind the scenes spinning the records. Right. He's been here for a long time. No one knows exactly how long, but he's here to lend a helping hand and maybe get his way out of the park along with you. Right. If, if you survive. If I survive. That's the question. All right, so who is Willard Wyler? So Willard Wyler is played by none other than Paul Rubens. Oh, man. Oh, man. Paul Rubens. Man. You all have really outdone yourselves with this star-studded cast. Another 80s icon, right? Another 80s icon. Man, that's crazy. So uh, let's do this. Let's get into the gameplay. All right. So what can players expect from Zombies in Space Land? Well, we brought lots of new things to the table. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously we got lots of zombies. Mm -hmm. We got doors you open, you explore the, the Spaceland theme park. But in the theme park, we have really cool attractions. So we have a roller coaster you can get on. So you can actually ride the roller coaster and shoot I, targets. I did that. I did the roller coaster. It was, and the, hitting the targets are hard. They were hard for me. I, you know, the whole thing, just clicking the buttons and doing things, trying to hit them. Yep. I got a couple of them clowns, though. Yep. We have the chromosphere, which is like a gravitron, creates a black hole above it when it starts spinning, where you can train up like 20-something zombies up into that same black hole. We've got rockets. You can test fire the rockets and, and get a line of zombies to go into the flames. You know, <coughs> there's a escape velocity, which is like a, a rocket ride that spins, and so you can get, get in there and the zombies get hit by that, and they'll fly hundreds of yards away. There's lots of cool, you know, park attractions that you can use. There's even bumper cars. And run the zombies through the bumper cars and they'll bumper get smashed. Cars. Bumper cars? Bumper cars. Y'all got bumper cars? <laughs> ah! Bumper cars, you tell me. So, are you telling me? Are you telling me? Zombie trying to come up with me. Hey, man, what the hell are you talking? If I, if I got beef with a zombie, I can run his ass over with a bumper car? You can. 
Do you know how long I've been wanting to do that to some people? Just hit them with a bumper car. Pow! Now, I ain't want to kill them, but I just wanted to, you know what I'm saying, just just, just, uh, just so they get the message. Yeah. I yeah, Miss Jones. Now, um, <laughs> it's my first grade teacher. She was very mean to me. Uh, oh, very mean. Sorry about that. Yeah, very mean to me. Said I had ADD, <laughs> which is probably true. <laughs> so, I heard another special feature about this game is the tutorial mode. And you know what? That's perfect. You know why it's perfect? Because some people don't know how to play and they end up getting popped really quickly with a score of like 90 and they don't, they be like, oh, I didn't know how to play. So the tutorial mode, let's, let's. You know. We've done a couple things to make the gameplay uh, more accessible, right? right? The map's a little bit wider, the lanes are a little bigger. You know, not only is it fun, and it's, just, it's a theme park and it's just fun, the music's exciting and stuff. Right. The spaces are a little larger, it's a little easier to maneuver around the zombies. Right. But we also have a tutorial mode. Um, and it's a little bit like um, pop-up tips that come by, right? So <laughs> in solo mode, if you go in and play um, and you turn on the, the park, it's like turning on the park tips, getting a guided tour of the park, right? Um, as you walk by different things in, the, in Spaceland, tips will pop up. And it'll kind of just explain to you how to play the game a little more. So we're trying to broaden the audience. You know, Zombies has been a pretty hardcore experience. Um, there's still a lot of depth for the hardcore, and tons of Easter eggs and, and, and things for you to unlock in the mode. But we want to also kind of bring more new people in. And I think the theme, the open spaces, and the, you know, the music and the tutorial type mode are all um, things that we've tried to do that will you know, bring new players into the fold. So what about the weapons? Let's talk about those. The weapons are, um, you know, we're bringing in the, uh, <coughs> kind of the, the ability for you to modify your guns that right. you find on the wall. So in Zombies, you find guns on the wall. They cost money. You buy them. You can use them. But now you can modify the gun. You can add up to six attachments to them mm -hmm. uh, in the front end before you go in. And so when you get to the gun on the wall, you'll have the gun personalized the way that you've set it up in the front end. Hey, hey, man. Sorry. I had to give me That's stop. all good. I had a cramp. <laughs> But the cool right. thing is you can, um, you can also up, you know, um, the weapon leveling yeah, from yeah. multiplayer and zombies is shared. What we can do is you can bounce back and forth between modes, however you want to play. You like to play with the shotgun, boom, 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 multiplayer. You come into zombies, your shotgun's leveled up. You can add more cool attachments and powers and abilities and stuff to your guns. Yeah, man. Because I, I was stuck when I was playing. I had, this one, I had this one gun that just went pop, pop. I think it was a 9 millimeter. I mean, that, that's cool if you want to rob somebody, but <laughs> no. that ain't cool if it, you had like 20, 20 different the zombies coming at you like ah, with a little crust around their mouth. You want something that's going to take them out. And we got some other cool guns. We got this, this forge freeze gun where you can freeze the zombies. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, and that one's great. Yeah. You can freeze them, and then you can have the slappy taffy, taffy perk and just go up and punch them, or if you're the valley girl, gag them with a spoon, and yeah. they'll shatter into pieces. Yeah. Um, well, we've got some cool to toys as well to play with. Like, there's a transponder. You can throw it down on the ground and then run around the map. And then if you ever get in trouble, push the button and you'll teleport back to where that you threw it on the ground. Oh, right. So there's some, some cool other, like, toys that you can play with as well that you can buy. We call them weapons from the future, but you can buy them from the ticket stands throughout Spaceland Park. So aside from the things that you can bring back and forth from multiplayer to zombies, mm -hmm. we also have some zombie specialties. And a couple of them you'll see in our trailer, which are super awesome weapons. One of them is called the Face Melter. And when you shoot a zombie with it, they literally turn into a firework and they blast off into the air and explode into a massive cool explosion. That's cool hot. colors and everything. That's hot. Yeah, so the magic wheel, what, what does that do exactly? So the magic wheel is a device that will show up in the park. Uh -huh. uh, it actually will jump from location to location, so it's never in the same place twice. Okay. And players can go up to it, pay a small amount of in-game cash, and it spins. And while it randomly spins, it gives you a random weapon that it could be something really awesome, like one of the weapons Brian talked about, like the forge freeze, but it could also give you something like a pistol when you really need an assault rifle or a shotgun. Right. But there's also some weapons that are only inside the magic wheel. And so, if you're lucky enough, you just might get one of those on a spin. And it's a little cheaper than a regular weapon off the wall, generally. So, there's that. You might get something cool, you might get the pistol, but, you know, it's a little risk-reward there as well. And that's good because, you know, I ran out of money while I was playing. And I was like, well, damn, do I need to get, a, like, a job at a, at, a, at a, you know, at a pharmacy or something? Like, what do I need to do? <laughs> well, you can work at the Lost and Found, and we have the Lost and Found in the park. It's at the front of Spaceland. Okay. And it's whenever you bleed out in the game, 
you lose your weapons, right? Right. And so instead of like having to go rebuy weapons off the wall and re-upgrade them and work through all that again, which is difficult uh, with the you know 20 zombies around you, right. you could run to the Lost and Found and pay a smaller fee and get your guns back, the guns that you went down with, with all the buffs and everything that you, that came with them. So that's a, that's a cool new feature that we've added uh, to Zombies in Space. It's like layaway for weapons. Right. Very smart. <laughs> you smart. All right, so let me ask you a question. What exactly was that 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 thing on the on the bottom of the screen in the right hand corner? You know, like a, 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 a meter or something like that. Like what was? It? Yeah, that's your fate and fortune cards meter. Okay. And so as you spend money in the game, or as you um, earn money in right. the game, the meter starts filling. And when it fills all the way up, then you can fire off one of your fate and fortune cards. And fate cards, they're they're both. Fate cards are, are permanent. You unlock them through uh, progression in zombies. Right. Fortune cards are consumable. You get them through loot. You can use them um, for one game. You can use them up to three times in a game. Right. And so they're 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 just they're buffs. They're short term buffs for the player. Uh, they make you more powerful. Some of them will give you a really cool gun for maybe thirty seconds or a minute. Some of them will, um, like one of them gives you money every time you get hit by a zombie, for instance. Or one of them, if I stand next to Lee. We we're, we're stronger together. So what's cool is you can actually stack them. So you know you can have more than one active at a time. Right. And you know you could have Phoenix up running. You could have the black hole gun out. You know you could have multiple of these these uh, fate and fortune cards up at any one time. And then you you know when you run out of your five that you brought into the map, you can go up to one of the fortune tellers in Spaceland, pay a small fee, and he'll refill your your hand. And you can do that three times in a game. So you could actually, you know, use up to 15 cards in, in one game. So one, one other cool thing about the Fate and Fortune cards is we talked about a little bit earlier about having that cooperative experience. Right. So sometimes a Fate and Fortune card is something that you spawn and it's just for yourself. But like Brian mentioned, there's some that you can spawn and they actually give the other player something else. So sometimes you'll share life. Uh, sometimes uh, you'll, you'll spawn something that the other player can use. So we encourage players to use them not only for themselves, but also to help the team advance in their quest. So what you're saying is you're able to work together with these fate, with these fate and fortune cards. And it's that's uh, that's another special feature of this game. That's dope, man. Let's talk about the team mechanics, like the, you know, the, the ATM. Yeah. Because I know there's a there's definitely a, a special feature with that. Yeah, we got a couple cool team mechanics, and one of which is the ATM. Players can go in, because a lot of times in zombies, like, you might die and lose money and need a gun, and then it's like, oh, Jay needs a gun. Oh, well, he doesn't have any money. So mm -hmm. he's got to kill zombies to get money. So how do we give you money? So there's an ATM now, and I can go up and just put $1,000 in it. You know, Lee can put $1,000 in it. Right. And they can just sit there. So when somebody does go down and they get back up, they can run over there and get, get the cash out and be able to buy a gun and get back into the action quicker. Hey, don't say that to my cousin, because, you know, the money's just start disappearing. You'll never see it again, you know. West, oh my gosh, okay, you about to say something. I was gonna say, in addition to that, we also have team door buys. Or, so there are key locations that open up and it lets players ex you know, explore the rest of the park. And in this case, no one's saddled with having to pay for the door all by themselves. So let's say the three of us are in a game, you can pitch in some money, I can, Brian can, and we can open up the door without anyone collectively spending all of their, their money. Cool, cool. Let's talk about the arcade mode. Let's talk, not arcade mode, but let's talk about the arcade. Now I know, I know because I've already played, I've played the game, and um, I know if you do uh, end up getting killed, you can actually go in there and you can, um, you can play and you can, get, you can get points and get your life back, right? But what are the other advantages and what are the other games that are in this arcade? In Spaceland, we got lots of cool attractions. Right. One of those is the arcade. And in the arcade, you can play games. You can play like shoot basketballs, you can play um, clown tooth, you know, throw the ball at the, knock the teeth down. Mm -hmm. We have bowling for planets. So there's lots of cool things. And when you play these games, you earn tickets. Word. And so as you know, you're kiting the last zombie around, people can be in there pl er, playing the different games, earning tickets and using those tickets to buy really cool weapons like Forge Freeze mm -hmm. or some of the ticket stands. You can get weapons from the future, which are like, you know, the repulsor, uh, the weapons that go on your left bumper. So the repulsor where you can fling zombies just by force pushing them or Armageddon where you can drop meteors from the sky and just annihilate everyone. And when you do bleed out, we want to keep players engaged. So when you die, you end up in this afterlife arcade and you can play games in there, which you can earn your way back into the living. So a lot of the same games that you see in the Astrocade are there in the afterlife arcade. So we want to keep players engaged, not only when they're on the battlefield, 
but when they've been taken off of it as well. Word. All right. So before we wrap up, we actually want to take the time to um, take the questions that the community has asked and we want to answer them today. Well, you two will answer them. I will ask them because I'm the one that's doing the interview. All right. So, huh, yo, will it have a ton of Easter eggs? The park is littered with Easter eggs. Okay. We have some complex ones for the really hardcore zombies community. Then we also have some more simple ones that just really offer that moment of success for players that uncover that one little thing. Okay, cool. So um, can we expect some sort of upgrade machine to further enhance our weapons? Absolutely. The okay. Hack-a-Punch system is definitely in Spaceland. We can't tell you where it is today, but it definitely exists, and you can definitely upgrade your weaponry. You're not going to tell where it is? No. Not even going to tease? No tease. Okay, all right. Hey, I, guess, I guess he ain't going to tell us. Hey, look, if it was me, I'd tell you. This is the next question. So, what type of system would the game have? Round-based or challenge-based, similar to Extinction? Uh, it's it's uh, round-based, right? Mm -hmm. But we do have challenges. Oh, so okay. we have Neil the Challenge Robot, that if you activate him, if you find the parts for him, you can activate him and he will give you challenges. But those challenges will span a wave, you know, of zombies. And they're cool challenges and, you know, it might be like, kill, get X number of multi-kills, you okay. know? So shoot, you know, two guys in the head at once. Um, or jumping kills, or just different explosive kills, different types of challenges that you'll have. And if the team pulls it off, then they'll get tickets, and the tickets can buy cool stuff. Got you, got you. Here's another question I have. What's the biggest change to gameplay in Infinity Ward's take on zombies? I'd say probably the, uh, the biggest change would be, you know, we've, we've got the depth with the Easter eggs like we discussed for the hardcore fans, mm. and we've got the accessibility. So it's, you know, with things like the Afterlife Arcade, uh, where you don't just die and go to spectate, you have the chance to earn yourself, come back to life. The Lost and Found, where you can get your weapons back um, if you've gone down and, and bled out. And then the, the more open spaces that we have, it's a little more forgiving, um, at least early on, for new players. Uh, and then, you know, we have the depth of, of Easter eggs and really cool stuff and unlocks that, you'll, that the, the better players and the more hardcore players will experience later. Got you. Gotcha. Can the zombies mode be completed solo? Absolutely. So we we built a solo experience that's just as rich as the multiplayer, four-player experience that you get playing zombies. Okay. You can complete all the Easter eggs, see all of the same stuff. It's all in there for the solo player as well as the people that want to get together and play. Cool. Final question. Are there any zombie-specific reasons to pre-order? Yeah, we have the Zombies in Spaceland pre-order pack that mm -hmm. you'll get. And in that is a really cool animated player card that's unique to this so that, you know, you can show, up, show it off to everyone else. Uh, we have a cool gun camo that you can use and apply it to any of your weapons. And then we have the for, uh, a rare fortune card pack. So it'll give you a number of, of like, rare, epic uh, fortune cards that you can find. Cool. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank the fans for asking the questions. I want to thank my man Brian, my man Lee. And for everybody watching out there today, and I don't know about y'all, but I can't wait to pick up Zombies in Spaceland. Oh, I don't really got to pick it up. They're going to send it to me. Because I'm in it, bitch. I'm in it. Yeah. I'm a player. That means that you can actually be me. We're going to bust a cap. Bah! See you guys online. All right. Boy, you're here now. What type of chemicals you put in this here? I just wanted to say that the whole time. <laughs>